Hello everybody, I'm Eternal Flame here, and today in this video, I'm here to talk about why I think it's likely that both Yuta Akotsu and Yuji Itadori, as well as maybe Toto, I'm not a certain about Toto, are going to show that they are on the road to surpassing Gojo, and that those are the only two that actually fully understand Gojo's dream, whether consciously or subconsciously, in today's video, because this is going to be a pretty hype video. So yeah, without further ado, let's get straight into this. Now, one of the important things I think I need to talk about in this video before we even get into the aspect of if they understand Gojo's dream is, is surpassing Gojo actually necessary by this point? Because a lot of people have been saying that surpassing Gojo or reaching Gojo level is not necessary because of how near death Sakuna is. And as much as I would love to agree with that, at the same time, I can't really fully agree with that considering the level of ease Sakuna seemed to just push Yuji away with in the most recent chapter. The reason why I'm saying that is because there's an entire chapter where Yuji seemed to be putting the pressure on Sakuna and literally everybody thought, hey, Yuji might have actually been able to put Sakuna on Death's door. There's a reason why there was a common theory that was so popular that this was actually just Ghost Gojo and it was Ghost Gojo looking down upon Sakuna about to die. But in reality, no, this was Yuda in Gojo's body. And especially considering the fact that Gege saw it as necessary to include Yuda in Gojo's body, I really don't think that Sakuna is anywhere near close to Death and that he is still holding back, which that is an entirely different problem for maybe a different day to discuss. Now, granted, I'm hoping I am completely wrong and I am hoping that that Sakuna is about to get demolished and jumped and bamboozled in this fight, but at the same time, I'm just saying it as I see it that it could be likely that I'm not, but I am still hoping I'm completely wrong here. However, even if it is the fact that Sakuna is on the door of death and them jumping them is going to be the final nail in the coffin to putting him down and they're not going to surpass Gojo or need to surpass Gojo, they are still going to need to surpass Gojo for the next fret being the merger, because the merger is still a thing that exists. However, there are other reasons of why I think they're going to end up surpassing Gojo, and this is where I'm going to talk about if they understand Gojo's dream at all, and why Gojo's dream is going to lead these, these students surpassing Gojo. Now, for a long while, me and the fandom were on the path that no one was going to surpass Gojo, and rather they'd surpass Gojo as a collective instead of just surpassing Gojo themselves. However, I've recently come to change that path mainly because of the fact that Yuda Akotsu has shown up in Gojo's body. So it's kind of led me to the idea that it's more likely that they're going to just surpass Gojo, and this is going to be their show of just them directly surpassing Gojo because they're going to show Yuda in Gojo's body and how Yuda chooses to use it. Which is how I ultimately think that Yuda will end up surpassing Gojo, because this is something that I think a lot of people misunderstood about my opinion. I think Yuda's only way of surpassing Gojo is using Limitless in his own ways rather than using it in the way that Gojo does, because Yuda also has some advantages that Gojo doesn't have access to, as well as all the knowledge that Gojo had in the past. So, so long as Yuda uses it in his own unique ways, I think he might actually end up doing better than Gojo does. But anyway, let's get back to what Gojo's dream is. Gojo's dream, for anybody who doesn't really know, is simply to be able to create a future where there are several people who can be the strongest together and change the world, to guide the world on a new path, where someone no longer has to ever be alone and isolated as the strongest again. Which that was what Gojo's ultimate goal was, to make people as strong as him, or try and at least make his students reach his level one day so he would no longer be alone and isolated, and so no one else would ever feel that pain of being isolated like Gojo had done in the past once again. Which I believe a lot of people don't actually understand what that dream was. After all, a lot of the characters were always okay with pushing the role of being a monster onto Gojo as Yuda himself had called out. However, Yuda himself wanted them to share that burden. Even though he wasn't on Gojo's level, he wanted to understand Gojo be because he was that kind of a person. And unknowingly to him, he was trying to fulfill Gojo's dream. He was trying to fulfill Gojo's dream of being able to be a strong ally that Gojo didn't have to be alone around anymore. Unfortunately though, Yuda Akotsu wasn't strong enough to be able to actually relate to Gojo as we see Gojo ending up still being a monster and having the Turk on the burden alone. Yuda Akotsu was not strong enough to be an ally for Gojo because Gojo still ended up wiping out the higher-ups completely on his own and taking on the burden completely on his own. Sure, yes, him as well as the other second years stood outside of the building Building, but they still ended up not being able to do anything to help. Or at least at that time, he was not strong enough to actually be an ally of Gojo. However, the time skip has now passed, he now has access to so many more cursed techniques, and finally he is now in the body of Gojo himself. And now certainly he has the power to be able to become a strong ally for Gojo, and show that he can use the technique even better than Gojo by carrying on Gojo's dream. 
But most of all, Yuta carries the complete pieces that Gojo did not have access to that will allow Yuta to actually fight alongside other people, which is something that Gojo never could achieve, mainly because of one thing that Yuta has in comparison to Gojo, which is the capability of choosing who gets targeted by his domain expansion, something that Gojo has never shown the ability to do, and if he did have the ability to do that, he would have used that back in Shibuya, but he does not have access to that ability. On top of having all the memories that Gojo also has access to, I think it could be very, very likely that Yuta is going to figure out how to use Limitless in ways that it actually allows people to fight alongside him, and that will be the way that Yuta ends up surpassing Gojo, which is the other reason why I do think that Yuta actually entered into Gojo's body, or at least the reason why Gege showed Yuta entering into Gojo's body, to show the students all surpassing Gojo in their own unique way, to actually have Gojo on the field once again, so they could directly compare to Gojo. So we as an audience could see Gojo's dream happen live, Gojo's dream happen as a reality, because Yuta Akotsu was one of the people who did carry on the will of that dream, because Yuta Akotsu wanted to have some of the burden that they all always put onto Gojo, seeing it as something unfair to always put onto Gojo. The second year's all together wanting to help take on that burden, and that's where I think that Yuta Akotsu and Gojo's body is going to differ. He is going to want to take on that burden with the others, and that's what's going to allow the other two that Gojo had put faith in for his dream to come to reality. After all, both Yuji and Toto were mentioned in people who would be able to help in Gojo's dream coming to reality. Which is also why I don't think that Yuta Kotsu is going to fight alone, as I think the next person who is going to join into this fight is actually going to be Yuji Itadori himself. Because while Yuji was basically pushed to the side like he was nothing, I don't think that this is the end of Yuji Itadori. In fact, if anything, I think this is going to be the beginning of his growth once again. If we think that Yuji's growth was insane before, when he was landing 7 black flashes all back to back, and then he landed another one in the most recent chapter, then oh boy, things are about to go really really insane, especially with him seeing the lengths that Yuta Akotsu is willing to go. Of course, there's also a chance he might be stunned by what Yuta is going to do, but I also think that this is where Yuji is going to grow in order to reach the level of Gojo. The reason why I think Yuji is about to grow is for a quite a few reasons. Number one, Choso just died in front of him, and that is something I think is going to very heavily motivate Yuji to want to get revenge, but also because of the fact that the one who caused this to happen effectively pushed him to the side, and I don't think that Yuji is just going to watch as Yuta and Gojo's body actually fights him, especially considering the amount of rage that we saw that Yuji was fighting Sukuna with. The man was straight up determined to rip Sukuna's heart out and then do something else to him. We don't know what he was about to do to him, but we know Yuji was extremely filled with anger. However, there's one other advantage that being in Gojo's body actually grants Yuji, which is this amazing advantage that it grants him. We already know that Yuji and Yuta Akotsu are able to fight very, very well together in sync, as if they have been fighting together every single day in their life. After all, remember when Yuji and Yuta had fought against Sakuna, and everyone thought that Sakuna might have been near death because of how well they were actually doing. Now we're about to get a run back of that, and I think that that's going to allow Yuji to grow because Yuji is going to that he is behind, which is going to result in him growing to match that level, showing that potential that he has that has been hyped up for this entire arc, and that he has continued to take more and more advantage of. But most of all, Yuji is someone who is very different from a lot of the characters, because Yuji saw Gojo as a person, which was shown very early on into the fight in an interesting scene that I think a lot of people actually forgot about, which that scene was when Gojo was preparing to go fight Sakuna, everyone else was on their edge, a bit on edge because of Gojo's general vibe he was giving and general air he was giving. However, Yuji immediately tried to reach out and pat Gojo on the back, not caring at all about the vibe he was giving, because Yuji didn't see Gojo as a monster, Yuji saw Gojo as a friend and as a person, which is why I do think that Yuji is also trying to take on the burden of being a monster like Gojo would, or at least he would be willing to take it on as well. After all, as he himself said, he was willing to eat anything so long as it meant beating Sakuna. Yuji is the one with an unshakable resolve and an unshakable ideal down to the point where it can even rival Sakuna's ideal and it annoys Sakuna so much that Sakuna wants to destroy that ideal and it's something that I think is going to show Yuji's strength and is going to allow Yuji's strength to grow, especially considering the fact that Yuta Akotsu in Gojo's body actually allows for this to happen purely because of the fact that he can fight without his domain targeting Yuji. And I also think that it would be fitting the two who could relate the most to Gojo's dream and understand Gojo's dream the most, as well as who a Gojo was as a person, would show that Gojo's dream can become a reality via surpassing him together. 
It would also be an interesting way to show the future Gojo and the future Sukuna overcoming the past Sukuna. Because might I remind you guys, Yuji has the same potential as Sukuna. So it could also be our best way to show a Sukuna and Gojo fight tag team together because Yuji has the potential to have Sukuna's technique and continue to grow. But most of all, this is because it is Yuji's conflict against Sukuna that I think is going to allow him to grow this much. Yes, of course, Yuda does have a grudge against Sukuna, and Yuda wants to become a monster against Sukuna, but I also think this is still Yuji's fight ultimately. On top of that, we already know that Yuji full-on intends to grow to Sukuna's level, as Sukuna himself had said after Yuji had landed several black flashes, does he intend to grow to my level? We know Yuji does have room to grow, and the best way for him to grow is in the battle. After all, the reason why his cleave and dismantle was so weak in comparison or so weak output was because he wasn't used to the technique yet, and we know that Yuji still has stages and ways to grow, which is what I think this battle is ultimately going to allow him to do. And more importantly, why I do believe that both Yuji and Yuda are likely going to end up surpassing Gojo. Yuda through having the Limitless and the potential ways of using it in even different ways than even Gojo himself could use it. As well as having the capability of being able to fight alongside others much better thanks to his control of the Limitless as well as the control of his abilities so he might actually be able to have other people fight alongside him and Yuji Itadori and his unparalleled growth that he has been showing across this entire arc and he's still layers of ways for him to grow. But how about Toto? Why is Toto going to surpass him? Well Toto surpassing Gojo is a bit more iffy in my opinion. However, I don't think Toto is going to fully surpass Gojo, but I think Toto is going to be able to fight alongside them and be the final key to actually being able to allow Gojo to have very strong allies, or at least Yuta Gojo having very strong allies, mainly because Toto's technique is the absolute perfect one to work alongside Gojo's. Now, fun fact, a while back I was actually going to make a video about who would be the best person for Gojo to take with him to Shibuya, and my answer was ultimately Toto, mainly because Toto was the only person who could actually fight alongside Gojo and never get hurt by his attack mainly because of his ability to swap places with things. Which I still stand by, especially considering this is a Toto that now has the ability to swap 50 times in a second, which is absolutely insane and going to be extremely useful to force Sukuna to get even hit by any attacks, to force Sukuna to get hit by every single attack and absolutely necessary. While also at the same time being necessary for controlling the AoE that Gojo's attacks usually do cause. Most of all, Toto was also put on the list of people that Gojo thought would surpass Special Grade, and I, like a lot of people, think Toto is already at a Special Grade level, mainly because his hand clapping ability is now very, very broken, considering he can swap 50 people a second, which is absolutely insane of an ability to have, especially for someone like Toto and his insane battle IQ, but I think this is going to show his ability to grow as well. Now, I do think that Toto is going to end up being eclipsed eventually, however, I don't think that's going to be immediately what will happen. And even then, even if Toto is eclipsed in power, I don't think he will be eclipsed in usefulness, mainly because that is what Gojo's dream represents. Strong enough allies that can fight alongside each other. Even if Toto isn't on their level, I think Toto is going to remain strong enough to be useful, mainly because Boogie Woogie is a very strong technique that doesn't really care how strong you are. It will always be a useful technique to be able to swap places with someone and force people to get hit by attacks or disorient them. No matter how much you know about Toto's technique, Boogie Woogie is always going to be useful especially when more and more allies get added to the field. This was shown by the fact that Boogie Woogie even now still works on Sukuna, even though Sukuna knows how it functions and was quickly able to adjust to the Vibra Slap. And it should be noted that still Sukuna ultimately at the end of the day, you know, one of the smartest, if not the smartest combatants in the entire series who was quickly able to adjust to it. So for that reason, I do believe that Toto is still going to be ending up relevant, even if he does end up getting surpassed, which I'm not entirely sure if he will be. Toto might actually end up growing to still be able to fight alongside them, even without his teleport ability. And by without, I don't mean that he's going to lose access to Boogie Woogie, I mean he'd still be relevant even if he didn't have Boogie Woogie. But still, he's going to be relevant to this fight no matter what. But that's ultimately why I do believe that Yuji, Yuda, and Toto are soon going to reach into a level beyond special grade, with Yuji and Yuda in particular surpassing Gojo in the future. It's also why, in truth, I don't actually believe that Yuta Akotsu in Gojo's body is not going to die either, mainly because Yuta Akotsu represents part of Gojo's dream, just as Yuji does, just as Toto does. And as this battle continues, it just gets proven more and more that Gojo's dream is the right path. After all, look at everything that has been done to Sukuna so far and realize the people that have contributed the most by far and away is Gojo and Gojo's dream, the people who inherit Gojo's dream like Yuji and Yuta. Yuji is the one who has heavily weakened Sukuna up to this point. Yuta took out both a tongue and his hand, something that thanks to Yuji he can't heal. Maki has taken away his heart. Hakari has held off Urame, where if Urame was here the entire time, things would go a lot worse for the characters. 
even some other people that are of the next generation, like Ui Ui, has been very, very responsible and helpful for teleporting everyone away who has been injured, as well as Toto, who has now saved a lot of the characters who could end up playing a future role in this battle, like Maki, who could end up coming back. It just gets proven more and more that Gojo's dream is the right one, which is why I think we're eventually going to see Gojo's dream become a reality for Yuji, Yuda, and maybe the other students. After all, could it also be possible that Maki, Hakari, those types of people end up making Gojo's dream a reality too, but I'm not as certain about them because they don't understand Gojo or believe in Gojo as much in the dream like Yuda and Yuji do. Sure, they're not aware of Gojo's dream directly, but they are living proof that Gojo's dream is possible. Not to mention the fact they are living the way of Gojo's dream. Both of them are reliant on other people. Both of them have other people to fight alongside them and are willing to fight alongside other people rather than just taking all of the burden onto themselves. Also, because it's questionable if Maki can even get stronger, like, it's really super contentious if Maki can get stronger or not, so I don't want to talk about that. And how Hakari can surpass Gojo is also kind of weird. Like, a lot of people are debating on how that could be possible. For example, Yuda Akotsu now has access to Gojo's body, so it's really easy for Yuda to surpass Gojo, and Yuji now has access to the person who killed Gojo's potential and techniques, so if Yuji ends up developing and growing past that person, being Sakuna, and learning how to use his own techniques just as well as he did, if not better in his own style, then of course, yeah, they can surpass Gojo pretty easily, and even Toto, you can make some arguments thanks to how useful his technique is that he can reach that level. Hikari is just super weird, but at the same time, there it is possible. Like, we don't know Jujutsu Kaisen, Gege is a really good writer. But yeah, that's why I ultimately believe this is also going to be Gojo's victory in the end, because while Gojo himself wasn't strong enough to succeed, Gojo through his students was. And that's the ultimate way that Gojo can win. It's also why I had a huge problem with Gojo if Gojo did win the battle against Sukuna, which he didn't. Because if Gojo did win his battle against Sukuna, that would mean Sukuna was proven right. But at the same time, that didn't happen at all, so kind of pointless to bring up. Anyway, that was about everything that I had to say in this video. If you like videos like this, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'm gonna see y'all later. Hope y'all have a good day. Peace out. Bye.